AC Witches Social back in business on Monday. It's our second <laughs> second day off, second day of our, our weekend for us. And uh, we're joining you guys live today from our, our house here. So I am going to comment, put our phone number up here, 226-931-1111. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's Melinda's cell phone if you'd like to give it a call at any point during this session today if you want to call in and let us know how things are going with you guys what you've been up to anything that we've said that you've liked uh, there we go I just pinned that um, yeah today we're taking a little bit of a relaxed approach because it's our day off so each morning we get together and kind of discuss the topic of today yep. and just kind of put a structure together of where we want to go and um, how long we want the social to be just to keep us on point. Today we're like free range in it. Yep, that's no, it. No notes. That's, no, well, I got the date on there. That's it. <laughs> um, we're just opening up the discussion to you guys. So if you're joining us, Reggie, hey, how's it going? If you're joining us, please just jump on and give a shout out. Say hello. you're here. Yep. Hello. Um, if you're not from the area, which is Norfolk County mm -hmm. for us, um, let us know where you're from because we've had a couple people join us that are from out of the country, actually, mm -hmm. which has been kind of cool. Neat. Yeah, yeah kind of neat. So we're free range. We're stupid birds <laughs> so, <laughs> quiet all day until we hop online so we're in our kitchen slash dining room and our birds are in here i'm sure you can hear them in the background it's like as soon as jeremy gets in eyesight the one bird just goes nuts yeah she wants a yeah, head scratching. she wants out yeah so yeah give a little shout say hello today's discussion um is basically your inspiration mm -hmm. what has inspired you in the past and this could be to jump onto witchcraft or any other type of spirituality sure. uh, we want to know your stories we want to know your inspiration we want to know other ways tools trinkets that inspire you throughout the weeks mm -hmm. or the days to keep you motivated and keep you pressing on so it really is an open topic today yeah. we want to hear from you guys and we understand not everyone wants to call in and we're okay with that yep. um and you need time to type things out so yeah type away and let us know part of the reason for this today too is well as i did mention it is our day off but also when we were trying to get going this morning we also had a few commitments first thing we had to go and uh, run a an errand to pick up a new modem uh, we also had a meeting planned at the shop for 11 o'clock, a Zoom meeting, and that got postponed. For what? For what? what uh, oh, to, to move our business into an online presence, yes, to have an e-commerce e site. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. And so we've been discussing this with some professionals for a little bit, and we had a meeting set up today, and they had to postpone it until tomorrow. Yeah. So we're like, oh, okay. So we, we came home early, and uh, of course, the kids are all home working at school and all that sort of thing. And uh, so they uh, were excited that we were back home right away, and uh, it was just a nonstop cycle of, of kids they in and out. They want to spend the day with Sure. Us. They wanted to put in their two cents on, on what we should talk oh, about and yes, discuss. Yes, we, and, had, wow. we had karma <laughs> come up. We had yep. uh, Georgia would like to talk about Georgia today. Yep, that's all she really wants um, to talk really about. That's really all she wants to talk about is her. Mm -hmm. um, William suggested karma. Jocelyn suggested um, how friends can suck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Boyfriends, Boy girlfriends, friends. whatever, yeah. Um, and Emma was just busy working on her homework. So yeah, she, she dumped really us had, in lieu of her friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. she, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, that's that's how our day has been. Now we have um, shared in previous uh, videos as well. Oh, yeah, sorry, there's a whole bunch of I, my my bad here. Oh, oh goodness oh, gracious, wow, goodness. Yeah. Uh, Jim, Melissa Charmaine saying hello, hello, yeah. Sharon. Amelia. Kim, Kim was there. Amy's on. April. April. Daph, Daph's back. Welcome. welcome. <laughs> yeah. Holly. Alpha, you're alphabetizing today while I listen. Actually, I wanted to ask Holly, when you said you inherited this, uh, this store, I, I kind of, I'm curious. I want to know a little bit more about that, uh, what you meant by inherited, whether it was just like it fell into your lap or whether there was more of a story to that. Uh, you'll have to message us sometime and, and fill us in. Uh, Linda Kim, says, hey -o. Yep, and uh, Kim. Kim and Izzy. Hi, Izzy. Hi, Izzy. Um, Daph, you have birds as well. I'd love to know what kind of birds. Um, we have a red rump parakeet and 
a cockatiel, and then my daughter has two budgies, well, and the house is just loud. Very chatty little birds. It was originally my budgie, but that got commandeered, and, and <laughs> then uh, for Christmas, her budgie got a girlfriend budgie, and that was the end of that. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, we have Dora saying we're in her background. Very so nice. Thank that's you pretty for cool. including us. That's yep. awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So I see quite a few people on. So start typing. Yep. We will get to them. Let us know your inspirational moment that brought you onto the path, but also let us know maybe um, little objects or books or things sure. that inspire you. So for example, we have a customer, a friend of ours, mm -hmm. um, and she's been requesting a small little trinket, an owl. And it's it's not that it's of monetary value for her. She lost her original one. Um, it's more of an inspirational thing she likes to carry mm -hmm. around with her. Yeah. So we're working on that for her, getting her another little um, like quarter, inch, inch and a quarter um, mm -hmm. little owl figurine. It's just on back order. Yeah. So that's what I mean by trinkets. Um, I think Jeremy has a couple things here today well, we, with him. You did share yeah. basically yeah. on your journey, your path, what sort of uh switch tracks for you and it was uh uh drawing down the moon by margaret adler there you go sorry trying to find a yeah there <laughs> it is it's a it's a lengthy tome it's a big book it's it's not very simple reading as we did acknowledge but it is extremely profound and just a fantastic book uh, at 16, it was a little bit chewy. Very it was chewy. hard for yeah. you. To, well, you never did actually get through I've it at that age. I never actually finished the book. Huh? I was inspired and kept kept learning. That is not the book. No, that's my book. Uh, yeah, Sorry, that's this is my Sorry. version. This I my, returned this that one copy. to the library. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so she claims. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, it was what definitely got her started and hers. Reggie says uh, she's got that one. So yeah, give it a, give it a read. It is not, it is not basic information. It is a, a lot. I do remember even partway through on my journey, jumping on and reading it going, I haven't got a clue half the stuff that she's talking about. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is very chewy topic. However, it is definitely what got Melinda started on her journey. And of course, uh, she jumped on to other books yes, that, that simpler, and guided Simpler, you. cutesier kind of books. I've since then grown. Um, so yeah, my suggestion with that one, and I know people will probably freak out when I say write into them, circle passages, put notes in the margin. This is one of those books yeah. where you want to do that. <laughs> sure. We do that with a lot of our books, which is why a lot of our books stay in our personal possession. Yeah. Uh, we do have lender books that we like to lend out, uh, but more often than not, uh, we keep our own personal book. Izzy's read it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dad. Dad's got like this little farm happening here. Cocktails, lovebirds, <laughs> ringnecks, budgies with babies, Turks, and a couple of quails. Uh, clearly got some, some farm property there. That's not counting 12 cats. <laughs> <laughs> All fixed with microchip and two dogs. Wow! wow like, that's uh, a that's Doctor a, Doolittle. Yeah, sounds like my my parents. <laughs> what you're what you're hearing in the background is a combination of a, a cockatiel and a uh, red rumped parakeet. So, uh, very unique sounds. Uh, yeah. Pretty cool. They're they're family members here. So my parents have fainting goats. Oh, they they're fun. Yeah, they're they're pretty <laughs> cute actually. Yeah, so that's, and, that's and, our funny farm and cats. Yes, and well, chickens and, and quail and, and all yes, sorts of yes. stuff. So, oh, so. Izzy bought her copy from us. I didn't realize we had a copy actually, but yeah. we we get a lot of books cool. in, a lot of used books as well. So, uh, Amelia says inspirational moments. There are so many from her spiritual path. It was the gift of tarot cards from my dad and a clear quartz generator from her grandmother, nice. my dad's mom. There have been there's been no turning back. We hear that quite a bit where yep. it's uh, family heirlooms or yep. family items that are passed down. Mm -hmm. um, I was never fortunate to have anything like that, but I think it's very cool. I mean, my kids will love it. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. <laughs> We oh. just acquired uh, yes. last summer, yeah. uh, and it's in our shop right now, a massive butcher block that is part of the display it's like at Melinda's. 600 pounds. Yeah, when her uh, when her dad was saying, "Yeah, I might need a hand getting this out of the basement." I figured, "Not a problem." You know, the two of us can get it out. It's just a small wooden block, right? He's like, "No, no, it's, you know, it's about 600 pounds." And I'm like, "How big is this thing?" And he gives me some measurements, dimensions, and I'm like, "Nah, two of us no problem." But I brought my son along just in case. And sure enough, it's like, "Wow, this thing is solid." Like I'm I didn't factor in just how deep it was, how how much 
solid wood it was and he wasn't wrong 600 pounds on the easy side so that is from my uh, grandpa's meat shop he owned a, a meat shop a butcher a shop mm -hmm. and my dad actually learned how to cut meat on that when he was 15 years old so yeah it's in our shop uh, just like promoting that whole family entrepreneurial spirit kind mm -hmm. of thing so yeah thank you I, so, I forgot it is very much not a occult or witchcraft idea no. but it is very much a memento or a uh, memento my goodness uh, token, token basically of uh, that entrepreneurial spirit and, and person home for me actually sure. it was a family family heirlooms right? and that's Same pretty kind awesome of thing we do with Melinda's Enchanted Cottage it's very family oriented uh -huh. so we're gonna just scroll back up because we do have people typing some stuff and we want to make sure we get to everyone today because that is the basis for our witches social is to have you guys actually lead our witches social <laughs> yeah we're being a little lazy today we're lazy it's our day off so melissa says when she was 10 she went through a traumatic ordeal and the old lady who found her told her that she was a child of the earth uh, or that you were a child of the earth and i had a journey to make with magic to not give up and to start to follow my path I lost my way as I got older, but then you found Melinda, and in all honesty, <laughs> it's because of her that you've gotten back on your path. I would argue that you've never left it, you've just kind of been trying to find your way yeah. through it all along, so uh, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, Casey says when she was younger, someone had given her a clear crystal, and she told her that whenever she was worried or anxious, if she rubbed, uh, rubbed it, little angel wings would form on the inside and help get her through. I have no idea what crystal this was, and I've lost it many years ago, but I'd love to be able to get my hands on something similar because I do remember that it helped me a lot at that time. Don't know if this is what kind of answer you're looking for. Perhaps you have some insight on what the stone or crystal was. Also, when feeling conflicted, I look for similar pattern numbers, 222-444-555, etc. That's exactly what we're looking for. Any type of experience sure. that uh, it hits the feelers, the emotions, it's mm -hmm. just the inspiration, basically, to why you do what you do or who you are um, or who you are becoming. So, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, for us, books are always a good resource. Always uh, inspirational. We we love all sorts of things. It's not only books. It's not exclusively books. We do like crystals. We have unique and weird collections of all sorts of things that are uh, that are purposeful for us. As I mentioned with the the butcher block, even uh, while in no way it defines anything specific in our life, the butcher block yeah. it is very symbolic of of something that we value. Uh, it holds importance and value for us books are easy because they're they're wonderful they're beautiful we keep them they're they're refreshing our inspiration and our thoughts and our ideas uh this was one for me i'm going to show off this one the goodly spell yeah. book um old spells for modern problems it's a it's a, a view on old spells and how we integrate them into today's beliefs and culture it was the first spell book i ever bought. i was gonna ask did you you had that before we yeah. met actually. um shortly Short shortly after we met but yeah it wasn't uh it wasn't because of you that i bought no. the book i was already well on my path of some form and uh, this book just kind of jumped off the shelf at me and i i picked it up and uh, blazed through it i didn't really have a, a clue or an idea and it was very outside of everything that i was already looking for it just kind of it just happened and we used to have two uh bookstores here in simcoe and now we have zero zero and uh yeah yeah it's it's an unfortunate thing for us because we have to we have to go far and wide to find bookstores even then it's hard to find mm -hmm. books we like our used bookstores we have a few that we go to one that holly just uh yep. scooped up there Somehow that was one of our quiet. favorites to yeah. go to um and then another one we have out by Cortland. Mm -hmm. so it, it's pretty awesome too anytime we're out in those areas we always make it a point to stop by graham says hi hi, hi graham, graham. Uh, April says when she was a child, uh, an old friend came over with her older sister who had a deck of, a deck of tarot cards and gave her a reading. Later I found my mom had a book on tarot and a deck which I read and it really opened my mind. <laughs> uh, that is uh, part of my journey as well, somebody introducing me to oracle cards yep. and then from there the exploration of, of the truths of oracle cards or the insights that came because of that. Well, what can tarot be all about? And uh, that's long story short kind of how i met melinda didn't even realize that we had an occult shop in simcoe uh, 
Um, he answered an ad um, for the tarot workshop. Yep. And to this day, he's never taken the tarot well, workshop. Not really, no. 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 <laughs> I certainly have taught it enough times. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, that being said, I agree with tarot. Actually, tarot for me, they're like uh, purses or shoes for other girls, women. I, I love tarot decks. I'm inspired by them. Uh, I can read with just about anything, including a, a deck of playing cards. That's kind of fun. But honestly, it's... Uh, for me, a lot of times, they're more just inspiring than they are. Something that I use as a resource or a tool, unless I'm actually reading specifically, in which yeah. case I have my favorites that I go back to. Uh, I'm enjoying the Starman uh, tarot right now, which was inspired by the art of, uh, was created by the art inspired for David Bowie. So, so there's, his influence there's right inspiration there. on two levels there. Yeah. One, it's tarot cards, but the other, it's David, David Bowie. Bowie. Right. So yeah. that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Holly, you're right. Books are magic. And they are. You know what? I'll message you later because Georgia is looking for Luann Rice books right now. And because we're in COVID, we can't go anywhere to mm -hmm. buy them. Um, and we can't go to any used bookstores to search them out. So she's looking for Luann Rice. Yeah. And of so course, anything can. witchy, magical. Uh, yeah. yeah, we like I, I like our educational books, but Definitely. I also like a good... A good read. Good smut <laughs> so, novel. Good smut novel, I call them. Um, My mom always called them mindless drivel. <laughs> yeah, mindless drivel. Yep. They are inspiring, so I have to be careful when I'm reading books because I'm inspired to write my own books on an educational level as well as a smut novel level mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. a fiction and non-fiction <laughs> so yeah to sort of to recap that for us books are always fantastic and inspiring uh, Darrow, uh tarot decks are, are great crystals are fun and cool uh, anything that we can carry around as a reminder or a talisman of some sort uh, fantastic for that purpose Mm. Yep, yep, go ahead. Daph says, not that long ago I got my new tarot deck, the Witch's Tarot, and they are a good set of tarot and she's happy to use them. So exclusively that is the tarot deck that we yes. work with at the shop. Uh, you'll uh, you'll absolutely love it. The it's one of my favorite decks. Amazing. Next yeah. to the Dreamer deck. but uh, Dreamer yeah. deck's good. Uh, there is also, uh, shoot, um, Heaven and Earth Tarot is yeah, the most recent that one that I got. Yeah. And uh, following a Rider Waite style artwork, uh, I mean, they're all Rider Waite decks that we work with, but uh, that one is probably the most beautiful and the closest uh, rendition to a Rider Waite deck that I've ever seen. But uh, by far, our favorite deck to use is the Witch's Mine Tarot. Mine is the Witch's Tarot. It's so much that I lost my deck at one mm. point, and uh, Jeremy went and bought me a brand new one because um, I didn't want to read with anything else. I wasn't inspired to read with anything else. We bought her so, a couple different ones, and yeah, she's like, oh, they're the okay, same. they're not the, the same. one was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it was the, I don't know the name of the deck, but it's a witchy deck, mm -hmm. and it's got, like, the wreath on the front of it. It looks yep. very Christmassy to me, so I feel that I should only be using it around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Was it the it's Green weird. Witch? I think it's, I think the, it's the Green, green witch. witch one. Yep. Yeah. We've got so many. Yeah, yep. so uh, I guess another thing for me that I carry around is my necklace. Yep. Um, I've had it for, wow, ever. It's the only necklace I wear, even though I buy tons of them. <laughs> but it is the only necklace I wear, the goddess necklace mm -hmm. out of bone. So. Yep. Uh, Melissa says, to be completely honest, it's her daughter who's had been, who has been her inspiration. The way she looks at life and living has pushed her into becoming a better version of me and uh, that's fantastic as a parent you you do change your perceptions on where your values are where your priorities are so there's nothing wrong with that uh holly's agreeing which is tarot is also her favorite and she's liking the having an earth deck that she got from us yes you um, did get that one. Reggie <laughs> said got that one. Are you referring um, to the, the witch's, witch's deck? deck? I think. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Um yeah, a you go girl in there. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was for us or Daff, but yeah, either way, uh everybody can draw from that. You go that's inspiration um, yeah. in itself right there. I think it's so. amazing how closely connected we are in so many different ways. Just random little things. We're referring here to Daf, uh, to Daphne in New Zealand. Uh, birds. I mean, we're following the synchronicities. The other side of the world, but so many things in common in, in our own ways. Yeah. 
So uh, tarot cards, crystals, uh, other people, other people sometimes are a very strong inspiration and a key for us to stay true to our path, to, uh, uh, to follow an inspiration, a dream, whatever it is that compels us and keeps us motivated. Uh, we've been sort of focusing on energy in general yeah, and uh, what keeps days. us what keeps us going what keeps us from getting stale stagnant in our in our ways and these are great things great tools and resources that we can tap into even other people tapping into the energy of somebody else to inspire us to lift us up obviously yeah. not vamping them energetically but saying oh right because of them i'm inspired to do this and often often and running get I, I mean, we talked a little bit about that this morning um when we we're talking about inspiration uh jeremy's daughter if you guys don't know uh, she paints mm -hmm. she's an artist and she's actually really good amazing uh, she's an amazing little artist she's only 17. so i've just asked her to um paint something for me to put in the shop for a milk a picture of the goddess Brigitte yep. and that in itself is inspiring to watch her create and paint and come up with things mm -hmm. I, I just think artwork is beautiful I can barely draw a stick men <laughs> so to watch her do it is just incredible I've actually never seen you try you illustrate with words you don't do pictures I don't do pictures which can be frustrating sometimes especially in laying out or designing the shop or what is it you want and she's like let me just tell you I'm like no no put it I, I can't visualize it can't put it down and, no no I'm just gonna tell you and I'm like oh no Pictionary? Pictionary is not my game <laughs> not your friend no not, your friend. not my friend <laughs> uh, Reggie gets inspiration for talking to like-minded people yes also part of the motivation for yeah. the witches social here we'll be honest yeah. As much as we're doing this for like-minded people to come in, it also keeps our energy up too. It reminds us about some of the things that may have slipped our mind or things that were priorities in our life uh, that got us on our path, that got us on our journey. It's a chance to remember, to reflect, and then that in itself is a motivation to, to keep going, to be inspired, to be I don't know shaped and formed by what's coming well i think being virgos we get um lost in the shop in mm. the business aspects of the shop yeah, always that... creating and promoting the business so when we get to sit down in the witches social we actually get to see um, other people and how they're feeling and what they're doing and mm. that's inspiring to us because they want to learn and grow and we're watching that yeah <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a neat thing to be able to do oh yeah izzy yeah. has one of jojo's paintings uh we're hoping that there's going to be more of them in the shop in the future so uh izzy also an artist herself i uh i'm honored that she finds that to be a treasure of hers as well um yeah that's that's pretty cool that's pretty cool uh if you've been into our shop you've seen her work i can guarantee you well, I shouldn't say I that because she does yeah. tend to get, uh, not not her art, but things tend to get hidden in the shop. She loves to move things around and there's oh, a good possibility yes. that you've been in the shop and there has been something since day one that has been in our shop that you've never had a chance to see because there's so much to look at. So merchandising <laughs> and displays is very inspiring yeah. for me. I just take it to a whole new level. Crafting and creating spells yeah. and the things that you would purchase in the shop, making candles and things, those are my creative outlets. Mm -hmm. um, some people paint, some people sing. I like merchandising product. Yeah, when I like making it look beautiful. When she's in the zone, I just kind of back off and let her, <laughs> let her do her thing. And uh, that's always a fulfilling day for her, a chance to express herself in a, her own creative way, actually. Yeah, it's my own It's her own, own aspect way. of creativity, and I just, I know well enough to, to leave B, and she always does a fantastic job uh, by herself. Pat's joining us now. Hey, Hi. I uh, hope your day is going well. Yeah. I hope you're having a good day today. Um, yeah, so we all have our ways to keep motivated, to keep inspired, to keep, um, I don't know, moving on our path, on our area of, of inspiration, of direction. It gives us a sense of purpose, a sense of pleasure, uh, and it's going to be different for everybody. So we do encourage you, implore you to find yours and to touch in on them and stuff. Oh. Yes. You want my charger? Uh -huh. <laughs> See when we're home, crotch goblins. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's back in like an hour. 
I know. I know. Daddy Bird <laughs> has all the best tools that don't get abused. <laughs> that would be Georgia. That's right. <laughs> who is all about her. <laughs> Uh, uh, Amelia shares that inspirational Amy. people, or sorry, yeah, Amy, uh, inspirational people are a whole other topic for her, my grandmother for sure. She was always open and honest about spirituality. As for crafts, there are many. Yes, uh, we do know that hands-on for you is a very important priority uh, in your life as well. We still have your Blessed Bee pillow yes. in our shop. Uh, it's in amongst our personal possessions on the other side, so yeah. yeah. So, um... What inspired you onto your spiritual path? Let me put that one out there. For Specifically, people. oh, to everybody. Yep. To everybody. Well, you can answer. What inspired you or keeps you in that, that pinnacle moment that you were like, this is for me? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I guess we've, we've shared this. Yeah. The Dude, cameras, really? cameras running. <laughs> Georgia popped in to see what's going on. I'm going to do it. So Emma has to. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, grateful that she's putting the dishes in the sink. <laughs> uh, what motivated me? Uh, well, as we do know, people are motivated by two things. Fear of pain, pursuit of pleasure. Uh, came oh, from so it was me that motivated <laughs> <laughs> I was pleasure that I was motivated was well on my path. But yeah, that was a, that was a good... Uh, you were the carrot as opposed to the stick. <laughs> I was the carrot. The carrot. Oh. Uh, no, it was, it was part of, uh, I guess it was already my journey that I was well on. I was just sort of following the synchronicity, following the patterns, um, just accepting whatever was possible, whatever could be, and uh, allowing myself the chance to explore and to learn. And once I let go of the things that were holding me back, I was able to... Yeah, I was just going to ignore that, but... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, for me, my inspiration just came from actually the freedom to be able to explore uh, without, without hesitation, I guess, without fear, without shame, without consequences, I suppose. So really gaining knowledge for you at free will yep. is inspiring. Yeah, I, I love seeking out that mental epiphany or that aha moment or uh, when things emotionally and mentally click together into place for me. It's such a, such, such a satisfying feeling. That is kind of the idea that, uh, that inspires me. And the easiest way to do that is to allow myself to question through, through inspiration of books or interaction with other people. But at that point, there really wasn't a whole lot of uh, people in my life that I could interact with on these these thoughts, these lessons, these ideas. So uh, that was yeah, definitely what got me going. Uh, Izzy says, because of COVID, I've been reading tarot over the phone with a friend of mine. That's awesome. It's really helped me become more confident in reading the cards while maintaining a connection with a like-minded friend. That's that's awesome. And sometimes you do have to really explore getting out of your comfort zone um, and, uh, and, and taking those opportunities to push yourself to learn, to grow. Um, Daph says she's always been this way since she was a child. She's an empath also. And uh, yeah, in some cases, some people's journeys, while no less important, they were definitely um, already well on their way, well on their path, where other people, they had to come from a whole different direction, a whole different path. Uh, Graham says I am freezing. No, you are freezing my I'm ice freezing. cube. Oh, Drink. Okay. Freezing. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, yeah, so and let, let us know, guys, what are your pivotal moments that made you jump onto the spiritual path that you're on? And I do have another question for you guys. Yep. Movies and TV shows. Oh, yes. Are they mindless drivel or do they have some type of inspiration for you? And I only ask because we're watching Fate, the Winx saga, and it's inspiring on all levels to be creative because it's something... Um, my kids and I watched uh, when they were younger. We watched yeah. the cartoon. So my kids are right into it. They're eating it up. They love this program. We're watching it as a family. Mm -hmm. um, and that's inspiring to watch my kids get so excited. Same with when I'm teaching people inside um, Melinda's Enchanted Cottage workshops and stuff. The inspiration to learn uh, from you guys is incredible. The way your energy just feels as you're learning. Uh, for me, anything, we, we watch a lot of different programs. We do. Anything that 
uh, keeps my mind engaged. Some things, oh, it's the live video that's freezing. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but it was them. I thought it was my device, but it was them freezing. Yeah, sorry. We are getting our internet upgraded tomorrow, so hopefully that uh, takes care of some of the buffering issues. We also have to understand that there are kids online here as well doing video uh, schooling School. and things. So hopefully, uh, honestly, their priority number one, you guys, as important as you are to us, can figure out how to survive without us. So hopefully uh, they're not getting booted around as much. Um, yeah, anything that inspires us, it doesn't have to be constant uh, hardcore educational stuff, but even as we mentioned, we watch Bones, and I've really been enjoying oh, the, the integration of the science aspect of who um, Temperance Brennan is with the what she classifies as the fluffy sciences of uh, uh, psychology, psychology. That's, that's being introduced in the later seasons as well, and how they both play a part in transforming and changing all of the team, really. It's because it's we work neat. with both in the shop we on a scientific level as well as a people level, which is the psychology sure. aspects. Yeah. So. And then, of course, the esoteric, the things yeah. that can't be explained. And if you've been into the shop before, I'm sure you've heard us say that our stance here on witchcraft really comes down to a careful balance between scientific explanation with magical components as well. Today's magic is tomorrow's reality. Uh, and once we've proven something scientifically, we've kind of lost the magic of it. Uh, and that's, well, it's unfortunate. It is kind of nice to understand and validate it. Uh, and, and we see this within all of our technology, our sciences today, really all stemmed from an imagination, a spark of fantasy or whim or magic, as it were, uh, once upon a time. You, you ask somebody uh, 150 years ago what it would be like to fly and they would have laughed at you. And today it's the preferred method for traveling long distance because it gets you there quickly. Uh, yesterday's science fiction is uh, today's reality. We're gonna catch up here. Uh, Pat uh, says for her, searching and then read Celestine Prophecies. And I knew that that was exactly what I believed in right then. She joined a healing circle. That was the beginning for her. Tried a lot of different paths uh, spiritually since then. And finally witchcraft uh, is where she's comfortable sitting at for now. Uh, Izzy says she doesn't have a solid answer to that question, I guess television, uh, inspiration, movies, things like that. It's been a slow but constant pursuit of interests, everything from tarot, runes. Uh, I can say that as a child watching bed knobs and broomsticks yes. really inspired me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Pat, have you seen the movie Celestine Prophecies and have you read the next book? Just curious. Uh, the Tenth Insight, I believe it's called? Yes. Yep. yep. Uh, well, she's typing that up. Um, oops. April, changing. she's going to watch The Winx. So it's, yep. yeah, it's called Fate, if anyone's looking. Fate. And it's, um, it's The Winx awesome. Saga. It's, it's pretty cute. I like it. It's um, not exactly child appropriate. No, but my kids love it. Fortunately, it is British. So I think a lot of it kind of went over their head. Uh, a couple things I'm like, oh. You didn't just say that. I'm like, oh, the British, they can get away with it. <laughs> um, yep. And uh, uh, we have a lot of other ones, too. I mean, people oh, really yeah. eat up practical magic. Mm -hmm. um, they're inspired by who the Owen sisters are and what they do. And Sally Owens owns a little botanical shop. And people get inspired sure. by those things. The, uh, the smut novels that I like to read, yep. um, it's because of... Uh, the the themes the settings I really like to read anything English based cultural cultural yeah, yeah. the cultures of those smut novels mm -hmm. so it's not about the the smut <laughs> no it's about the description of the places they are and and where they're walking and their what their house looks like it's inspiring romantic Victorian era yes yep. exactly yeah so that that inspires you and it uh, obviously it's not only on a magical level. Um, but uh, oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, everyone's Sharon, talking about this. Discovery of Witches, uh, prepping for the new season yeah. coming out. I uh, read the books years ago and now it's on TV. Uh, Pat's read uh, all of them uh, as well. So it is, oh, read all of the Celestine Prophecies, I'm guessing, the, yeah. the books related yes. to that. Uh, Discovery of Witches, unfortunately, we've been able to see the very first episode. Uh, we would have to subscribe to a new channel on. Uh, either Crave or, or something like that yeah. on our Roku in order to see and the rest. And we already 
We're, uh, have Netflix and Amazon yeah, Prime and we, Disney sometimes. We limit and, the amount of yes, money going out for entertainment. The amount of TV. So, <laughs> yeah. I know you can get a season uh, or you can get it one month for free with some of these things and then cancel. Uh, I would do it just for that purpose. Yeah. But we don't really have the time to just sort of sit and binge watch right now. So So I really love that they're books as well. Yeah. And I mean, I do have a handful of books that I'm actually reading at the moment, but that is one series that mm -hmm. I would like to check out my parents are even watching as a discovery of witches they yeah. they love it they were watching it all day yesterday yep uh kim uh with a little uh <laughs> uh winks uh i started fates wine saga a uh, little freudian slip there oops uh lol spell check winks <laughs> uh yeah yeah i loved willow uh Pat labyrinth. Says, labyrinth legend yeah. so i've not seen mm. labyrinth <laughs> shocker I know. We have it. David Bowie. I know. I okay, know. Okay, so I'm going to disappoint everybody here. You know David Bowie where he does that contact juggling thing? It's not actually him doing it. I'm so sorry to break that to you, but yeah. Uh, spoiler. I was, uh, I was really into contact juggling for a while, inspired by David Bowie from Labyrinth. And we actually do. Oh, I, you know what I do. I reference that movie from time to time yeah. in, in our workshops as well. Because... Uh, there is a, a wild epiphany that is made by the uh, um, the star character in that. Uh, Dora says, any reading that I used to do was uh, was through necessity. There's a particular technique that could uh, that could only be possibly achieved by reading a list of books, one of which was the Celestine Prophecy. Absolutely loved it, and I could not put it down. I'm actually not sure if I've read the rest of them yet, but I should. Yeah, definitely. Okay, now I'm intrigued. There was a particular technique that could only be possibly achieved by reading a list of books. Okay, you're going to have to private message us later and fill us in on that because I'm not familiar. Uh, Daft says, any movies or series about witchcraft, etc., as which is, a, uh, is what I watch all the time. Same. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, it's, same it's here. I'm channel. curious, what is your favorite uh, witchy movie, guys? Mm -hmm. Daft in particular, because you brought it up, so everyone else that's out there, your favorite witchy movie. Uh, now, Daff, are you saying that uh, History of Witches is on Netflix? Because I do know that Netflix does uh, provide different programming based on location. So it's not currently here in Canada available to us. We can get it on the Roku, uh, like the, the Roku streaming devices, but we have to subscribe to a different uh, different program. Yeah. Uh, is any of the Celestine contact in movie form? That's it, a good question, actually. I think it is. The, the first one is, is the Celestine Prophecies yep. is actually in movie form because that's the first time I became aware of it okay. was by movie, and then someone said it was a book, so yep. they brought me the book, and then they brought me the next ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to keep our eyes open for that. I would imagine it would probably be, as, probably be similar to what the movie The Secret was in regards to the book. I remember watching the movie. The Secret's movie. very documentary type kind thing. Of. This is actually a, a storyline movie. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, not, not documentary. Um, so. It's slightly unrelated to magic in general, but yeah. not too far outside of the scope of that where the, um, oh no, I just blanked now. What was the, um, oh, the movies based on the Illuminati and stuff. Uh, Tom Hanks. Uh, there was actual treasures. No, that wasn't That's Tom Hanks, but that was the Nick Cage ones. I like those, the con um, conspiracy theory to kind of movies. But uh, I remember these books uh, were very, oh, very popular. Oh, like the Da Vinci. There it is. Thank you, the Da Vinci, da Vinci Code. code. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I actually got the book. I watched the movie. and I thought that was great. So I actually bought the book so that I could read it. And I love it. On the first, like it was the first page. It says this is a complete act of fiction or a, fe a complete book of fiction. The next page went on to say that every word in this book is true. And I'm like, oh, I'm so confused already. I love it. <laughs> so there is one part in the Celestine Prophecies where it has an incredible description of energy mm -hmm. and how our energy bubbles uh, mingle with each other and how your energy can overwhelm someone or vice versa. So yeah, definitely if you can get your hands on the movie and watch it, do that. Yes. Uh, Sharon loves Practical Magic. Uh, she can watch it over and over again. The part where they had Midnight Margaritas is my favorite. Uh, we did that in the shop one night. Uh, for our MEC for our members, MEC we did Midnight Margaritas. It I, was a lot of fun. I don't think our neighbors were very impressed with it. We got a lot no. of banging around first thing in the morning the next day. 
Uh, the craft. She's excited to see the April so, or the to, to watch the sequel. Says April. We have both the sequel and the original. I guess it would be the yes. original and the remake would be accurately putting it. It was okay. It was, it was uh, okay. It was, it was good. okay. I still enjoy the craft original. Yep. Yeah. Much more. Anyway. I, I found the the second part to have some typical witchcraft mistake things. Sure. In it, people yep. assume it's witchcraft, but it's not witchcraft. Yep, and uh, yeah, Kim's just filling us in. Yep. Thank you, Kim. Vinci code. The Vinci code. Uh, the Secret by Reggie. Yep, yep. awesome. The uh, great now, the secret, the book, or the movie, or both. Uh, liked the book. Uh, the movie I thought was a little um, cheesy, I guess, but the information was still profound and true. Really good. Uh, in New Zealand, she has the discovery of witches in her area. Uh, you have a neon, so I watch what they have showing in the area and I watched the Wink series also it was really good yeah we just finished it last night actually so uh, yep unfortunately uh, Discovery of Witches is is not currently free to us yet ooh Hansel and Gretel 2020 uh, or Gretel and Hansel uh, it's a fantastic film a very different take on the original fairy tale the focus is on Gretel and her journey to discovering her power. That sounds intriguing. Uh, obviously not the same as the Hansel and Gretel version from early 2000s with uh, Jeremy Renner. That was, that was really oh, good. Oh, yeah. Are you talking movie, Izzy, or the series that's on? Is it a TV series? Well, there is a TV oh. series. Okay. Uh, she said it was a film, so it's okay. probably a movie. There's lots of information out there. Uh, what I really like about it is whenever we watch things like this, we always reality check it against what we know or believe already. And as we always say, it really doesn't matter about uh, right or wrong, the truth of magic, that sort of thing. It doesn't matter what you believe. A good example of this is uh, as tarot readers, we have a very specific way that we flip the cards. Um, it's our practice. It's our method. It's like pages of a book. Yes. It's not flipping them over the opposite way. And nine times out of ten, whenever we see somebody reading tarot in uh, in a TV or movie series, nine times out of ten, they flip it over like upside down, uh, reversing the card from the actual position it was in as it sat on the deck. And uh, for us, we always get a chuckle out of that and a little cringy. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that the magic is any less pure. And if you've always read that way, don't just change it because I said that that's how it needs to be read. But our methods are to, to recognize that the way it sits on the deck and flipping it over like pages of a book would be, would be true. Um, lots of books being spoken about. Wish I had a list of them all. We can, uh, you know what? If you guys that. have some good books, put them out there. Sure. So, so Dora can take a little peek at that list. Yep. And, and us as well. There's some fictional and non-fictional books that are great. <laughs> and we don't know all of them. And so I'm yeah. actually going gonna, gonna to put a poll out there just inspired to do this. Um, hard copy versus uh, ebook e-publication oh. of some sort oh hands down hard copy for me hard copy for us but mind you as we already said we're a little bit of uh luddites when it comes to the technology uh personally for me it's because i can't just flip through the pages and see my notes in the margins i know you can on uh, kindle and kobo you can yeah. write little notes in the margins highlight things like that uh, but it's not something that I can visually turn to a page and just sort of see and remember. Uh, a lot of times it's my notes in the margins that remind me about what the context of everything is about. So if I'm scanning real fit, uh, fast through a page, scanning through it, uh, I go to my notes and it's like, right, right, oh yes, that was the epiphany. Okay, genius, I got this and I'm back to it. So if you're just joining mm -hmm. us, um, give a little shout out so we know that you're here. Um, and then just uh, to catch you up, we're talking about inspirational things, whether it be people or items or trinkets or books or movies, anything that's inspired you to be who you are or make changes to your life, um, even that inspires you on a day-to-day -day basis to get your craft going, to get your mojo and juices running, flowing. So, hi. hi, Jen. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Stranger. So also let us know any books or movies that you feel are worth reading or yep. worth watching because we do have Dora asking. Yep. So send out your list of books, guys, that you've read or really enjoyed. Yep. Um, and send out your movies or television shows, anything yep. like that. Um, and then Jeremy also asked hard copy or ebooks. Oh. And <laughs> hey, Nancy. Nancy stands alone. Kindle for Kindle. her. She can't hold a book. Now, that being said, Nancy, if 
anything were possible, would you hold the book or do you still prefer the Kindle? Putting that out there. I can't smell a Kindle. I can. It smells like dusty electronics no, to me. No, <laughs> I want to walk into Holly's no, new I, bookstore and just I know, sniff all the books. That's right. The, the musty, <laughs> stale, you know, slightly smoky flavor yes. of cat and who knows what Ew. all else. No, it's it, the history of a book is is not only recognized by the the shape of the book and the pages, but also the smell that it has. So that's another inspiring moment for me yep. is uh, sometimes I get scrolling through Facebook or pictures and things like that, and I see book uh, bookshelves or, books or, books or libraries yeah. or places you can go and see these big, beautiful libraries or something I want Jeremy to make to, like, <laughs> alchemy cabinets. <laughs> this is how this inspiration works. Oh. I have a genius idea. Here's a picture. Make it happen. I'm like, where would you like me to yes. put that? Somewhere, I don't anywhere. Just somewhere. I don't care. Like, draw me a picture. I can't. Just make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So inspiration, creativity. It usually gets passed off to Jeremy to make it happen. So dangerous, dangerous things for me. I don't even go on Pinterest too much. There's too much there. <laughs> Uh, looks like the consensus is largely holding books and, and the, the hard copies. Uh, Susan says, this is funny because I was actually thinking of this topic this morning. I had a dream uh, when I was a child that I was followed by a profound experience. Oh, that was followed by a profound experience the day after my dream that connected me to the dream, that connected to the dream. Uh, that was the first time I ever knew that there was more. Dreams are amazing. Dreams are extremely powerful. And uh, yeah, if you've ever taken some of our dream workshops, we have a couple different ones uh, that will help to open up some of the possibilities for you. Hi, Susan. <laughs> it's great to see you. It I is already see used it. you in an example today. <laughs> ah, the alchemist, Pat Duhon. Yes. I just finished that not that long ago. Amazing. Mm -hmm. The afterlife of Billy Fingers, I've not even heard nope. of. Um, I, don't. I, know, I know the book. Uh, I, I've never actually learned how to say it. Bhagavad Gita, I think, if I were to, to say it. I'm taking a stab at that. Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I'm familiar with it. I've scrolled through it, skimmed it a few times. Uh, not read it, sort of cover to cover. Uh, you're welcome to sniff at the bookstore. Haha, ha, there will definitely be a cat. Nice. <laughs> uh, yes. So, yeah, for inspiration, we can turn to all sorts of different areas, all sorts of different things, not just books. Um, but, uh, yeah. Susan says she's famous. Because I used her in an example oh, yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe before you were on, uh, it was like the first 10 minutes. That's one of the differences actually between doing this on the computer versus doing it on the phone. We can usually see on the computer, we yeah, can see the people who are there? watching. This just shows us, uh, gives us an idea of, of how many people are online. That's about it. And it only shows us like if you've commented. Yeah. Other than that, we don't know you're here. That's why we're always like, Say Talk hi. to us, say hi, share your experiences, because we can't actually see that you're you're out there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we assume, obviously, uh, uh, gens and people like that are just quietly sitting in the background, yes. soaking it all up, and then not necessarily popping on and saying hello. So clearly, we uh, we struck a chord for her, you know, calling her on she likes what her style she does like her book. <laughs> so, yeah, hi, it's good to hear from you. Um, did I miss anything else here? Looks like we're all... Uh, yeah, we oh. got some... Oh, Women Who Run With yeah. Wolves. Nice. Uh, Self-Defense by Dion Fortune. Nice. Funny you talk about that. Uh, I've been scrolling through a couple different books on psychic self-defense for MEC members for the second wow, year. Wow, we're just giving it all away this well, year. Well, a little bit. We're going to be <laughs> holding them a little more accountable on things. And uh, I haven't quite landed on which one we're going yes. to be using. But uh, Dion Fortune, a fantastic name. Uh, done a lot for the magical community so yeah uh, so we're Susan doing... just hopped on she said sorry yeah no yeah. no I'm no, just reiterating we're doing psychic defense mm -hmm. um, with the second year MECs so it's one of the other books we're gonna get you guys to read uh, Graham saying the inspiration for his beliefs um, came forced to him when he was sitting in his truck on a hill in the middle of the farm when I was just questioning the reason I was put on this earth was it was my family had been stuffing my head with what I couldn't be, and right then I got the first idea of the path that I was going to be meant to follow, but it's too long a story for here. 
Um, actually, uh, knowing Graham and his story, uh, it, it would make sense probably that the farm would be a huge source of connectedness for you. Uh, the family farm, I've certainly been out there a few times. Some of my fondest memories Jeremy shows of us. Graham is on the farm as well. Uh, being out there and him letting me use the, the guns, shooting the snot out of a stuffed teddy bear that was back there, wandering through the farm with, with Grandpa. Fond, fond memories of that as well. Um, yeah, every time I drive past, it's a, it's a heartstring uh, memory that, that pulls on, on my heart, basically. So it wouldn't surprise me, uh, you being in that all the time, being so much a part of that life that place that that would be where a lot of your recognition and awareness of magic etc comes from and probably well, some of your fondest memories and probably your, your most painful memories at the same time and nature in general too yep. right when you're you're out on a farm or in nature mm -hmm. definitely draws inspiration the world is much bigger yeah out there than it is in our Homes. Yeah, I remember being out with a, a good friend of mine. We used to mountain bike uh, routinely at least at least once a month or uh, at least once a week, usually Monday nights and stuff. We would get out on our bikes, go out in the trails. And uh, after huffing and puffing up a big hill and, and wiping out at the top, exhausted, uh, just kind of sharing and relating with each other. He says, this is my church right here. I mean, I know I go to church every Sunday. I know that spirituality is, is important and a key, but I feel more connected here and in these moments uh, than I ever have sitting in a pew and I thought that was quite profound as well and uh, didn't detract from the spiritual beliefs that we shared back then either it was it was something that I echoed as well I had my own mystical magical experiences with those as well I used to always break away from him at a specific part on this one trail because I always knew there'd be a, a, a deer at least one deer in the, the pocket up ahead and uh, I would bust ahead as far away as I could at that moment and then try and get ahead and then I would enter this little area and there would always be a deer or something amazing in that little pocket and then I would just sit there and enjoy it all in uh, and then I'd hear them huffing and puffing and of course the deer would take off but on several occasions uh, one in particular stands out there were like three deer uh, in that field all just standing staring at me as I'm staring at them and he came huffing and puffing up the hill around the corner came in and he thought the whole time I was just sitting there waiting for him, but uh, in all honesty, I was really disappointed that he was so hot on my heels that I didn't have more of a time to connect with the, uh, the amazing nature that was all around me. Magic, it's, it's the purity. It was my inspiration back then. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, Graham would relate with that. Big, big deal for him being out on the farm. And uh, I'm sure in your own ways, you still can experience it where you live now. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he said that you hit the nail on yes. the head. So <laughs> yeah, I was keeping up there. So okay. anything, anything else, guys? Like, uh, not that we're leaving. I just the comments slow down, so then the social slows down. Um, yeah. If you have anything you want to share, now's the time. Now's the time. If you have any questions, now's the time. You can call yeah. in to two two six nine three one one four one nine. Melinda's got her phone. One day that'll be a big thing. Yeah, that when we have the, the technology and maybe the support to be able to monitor the phones yes. and cue people up and yes. put them on pause. We're and, working yeah, towards it. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's like our own little TED Talk with Mom yep. and Jeremy. Well, a little different because TED Talk right. doesn't actually interact with people. Right. But uh, it's, we are working, like I said, from our... Uh, computer we've got the webcam going it's a little blurry we've got the microphone um, I'm borrowing some cool technology and working on getting that all up and running in the near future my son's like yeah you should use better equipment I'm like really it's a cannon you don't have anything better <laughs> but no we're gonna we're gonna try and do some some upgrading to our system hopefully have us a little more in focus probably won't like that so much and go back to blurry. <laughs> right. Tomorrow's our online consultation yep. for our e-commerce store, so that's yep. pretty exciting. So some of our issues is that Jeremy and I are older and yeah. we don't just 100% get technology and we're too cheap to pay someone to do it for to us. hire somebody. Yeah. It's funny, I used to be right into computers and programming and all of that sort of thing. Now it's like, I don't have a clue. Like yeah. it just 
uh, you blink and overnight it's a whole different monster. So yeah, having a little hard time keeping up on that. Uh, but there is definitely some resources that are available to us. We're just looking for a little bit of advice from some professionals on what's going to be best for us and for our business. And the store has grown so quickly yeah. over a short period of time. Sometimes it's hard for us to keep up with everything, right? I know we should be further ahead, yeah. but we've grown so large so quickly. So I it's, think it's the tiresome. Other, the other challenge is too, we're both Virgos, so we want it to be perfect right out of the yes. gate. And we don't want to overlook something in the process that we'll have to undo later. So we want to make sure that we put the effort into making sure that it's as effective as possible. Uh, I know one of our biggest frustrations with some of our online suppliers is their um, uh, technique for these are all the things that are available and then when you place your order it's like oh we don't actually have any of that <laughs> stuff in stock it's just available sometime somehow so, and that's I'm like that is not how our business is going to work <laughs> placing orders and for anyone who shops online this has got to be a pet peeve of yours placing orders for us takes time mm -hmm. we go through everything because one I hate ordering online I hate ordering without touching it or seeing it or being a part of it. So crystals is out. Any crystals we purchase, it's because we can physically go and purchase them. Very rarely do we purchase crystals from a catalog. Mm -hmm. So to purchase products online from like a catalog is, is a time consuming process. Then when they come back and say, no, sorry, we don't have any of that in stock, it's frustrating. Yeah. And so part of our job is to seek out good suppliers mm -hmm. and that that is that is challenging yes for sure. it's challenging uh, but it's surprising how many people kind of have this system it's like no we had it once like 15 years ago and it's still in our inventory but we don't actually carry stock of it I'm like so like that's even, not how this is gonna yeah, work yeah even books when we're ordering books yeah we literally read the captions for every book we order to make sure that it's going to be proper for in our shop and it's going to be of interest to the people that are there mm -hmm. so it's a process we don't just buy a bunch of crap in to sell like it's no. not who we are no uh dora asks is there anything good on netflix that i can watch this afternoon depending where you are of course yes. but yeah i would say did check Fate, out the wing saga it is pretty cool it is pretty uh, cool uh, we like as i said we before we've been watching bones it's not witchy it's not uh which you related, but like there's science. some really neat stuff in there. It's a great show. It's a lot of fun. Outlander. Uh, Outlander is pretty spicy. Yes. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> oh goodness, what else? There, there's a lot. Guys, Shadow, yeah, Shadow Hunters. Shadow Hunters. We've been it's watching. Kind of cool. Yeah, with the um, kids, it's been okay. Yeah. Anything with, uh, yeah, anything with <gasps> witches and vampires. The Nimue one. What was that called? Lady. It's it's all about Lady of the Lake. And how she became. Oh no, I forget. She's a fairy, and how yeah. she became the Lady of the Lake. What is that called? Is it called Nimue? No, no, no. Shoot. Um, It'll come back. We'll we'll type it in. It'll come back. But that one was fantastic. Cursed. I, cursed. I cursed. cannot wait until another season of that comes out. Um, <laughs> and the magicians we've been watching. Cursed. Jen, Len, uh, my goodness. When my mouth goes faster than my brain. Uh, Jen just confirmed it. Curse. Curse. The Thank Society yes. and the Order, both excellent. A lot yes. of fun. Yeah, great. Those uh, are awesome, Kim. Yep. Yeah. There is a, there is one out of, I believe it's Italy that's on right now, Aries. Uh, that is, yeah, it's a little... It's on the horror side or the... Secret Society. Psychological, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yes. The the Caridwin figure you made... Uh, yeah. The, you bought was made in Canada. It is. It is a Canadian distributor that we bought from. Yes. Lucifer. Lucifer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like us a little Lucifer? That's a great yes. show. Yes. Yes. Who yeah. is that actor? Because he's pretty cute. He's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, for those that uh, watch Lucifer, the inspiration that will eventually be the bar if I ever get it done in the shop will be... Lucifer's. Uh, yeah. Lux. <laughs> Lux. Lux bar. Yeah. Yep. The Lux bar. The whole backlit mirror glass stuff. Oh, yeah. Sabrina, yes, okay, Sabrina, Sabrina is was fantastic. amazing. Yeah, Linda we're doesn't sad watch they canceled it. any TV at all, and that does not surprise me. <laughs> yes, but you watch a lot of videos, Linda, That's like uh, this kind of stuff. You're you're usually online watching videos. Yep, she yes. loves. I, I assume mm -hmm. um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. 
she does get a lot of her educational stuff in that way. Yeah, I think, through, yeah. Uh, uh, YouTube or other sources of and inspiration. And we have friends like that too mm -hmm. who are like podcasts. They're listening yep. to podcasts or um, watching YouTube videos. My daughter lives on YouTube right now. Like it, it's crazy. She loves TikTok. YouTube. Ugh. No, she's not Emma. She's oh, not Emma. TikTok. No, she's true, young, yeah. so she's monitored a parental guidance on there. But she finds so many unique things and discoveries off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. She also finds things on zombies, which keeps her up all night. And then mommy has to give her like the lecture of yeah. what and what not to watch. The lights yeah. are left on overnight now. <laughs> yes, now we have lights on through the house because she's afraid zombies are going to come get her. Yep. Uh, Reggie's husband is watching Outlander right now. <laughs> I love Outlander. Yep. Love it. Yep. All right. We used to watch um, Once Upon a Time as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was great. pretty cute. We watched all of that except the last season. We just couldn't get into the last season. Uh, Graham says it's a good thing we don't own a library. Uh, yeah, we'd never... Well, we kind of do. <laughs> we kind of do. We kind of do. It's just spread out between our house and the shop, but we own a lot of, a lot of books. Amy says we're an inspiration, too. Oh, we inspire Amy, her. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I'm up to date. Sorry, I'm trying Supernatural. to Supernatural. Supernatural. Uh, you know what, Jen? Funny thing is I've only watched um, a handful of episodes of Supernatural. Lots of Want to like it online. more. Yes. Yep. Yes, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Loving that one. Yeah. Um, I've, I've watched a few episodes of Supernatural. I like them. I just I, like I don't know. I couldn't get into it for some reason. And it wasn't because the guys weren't cute enough, that's for sure. Uh, what is the gist of the Outlander? Um, Outlander story, actually, to Scottish. really cool. It's that Scottish brogue Outlander Time perspective. Time traveling. So it starts off in the present day, and then she uh, she follows she falls into a life from before a previous life well, experience she or something. falls into it but she creates a life there yeah so and then she ends up back in her other time yep. so it's kind of like time she, travel yeah she and, switches back yeah. and forth so i'm actually we're only on season two of outlander i think it was uh three i season think three yeah. maybe I, um it's just we have so much to do i never get to finish it um it's not on netflix anymore uh, oh, for Supernatural? Oh, oh. I'm trying to catch up here. What was it that... Kim, what's not on Netflix anymore? Oh, she replied to Jen uh, that uh, um, Supernatural's not on Netflix anymore. No, they just canceled it, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember there being a little warning that they were going to be ending it soon. If you pre-read all of them, I mean, so you're talking about the books. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and Graham, uh, I am of Scottish heritage, definitely, and that is part of the nostalgia for me is I love that that Scottish, um, yeah, the Scottish ancestry. I certainly heard a lot of it from Grandmother Post. He's very handsome in his kilt. <laughs> well, I was when, it, when I could fit into it. <laughs> It shrunk, okay? It's it's a hundred percent wool. He's Over happy. time it shrinks. He's a happy, I'm a happy man. man. Yeah, and my kilt doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> Actually I do need to I did pick up some uh uh there's special belt buckles that you can buy belt uh that are extenders. extenders. They're called extenders, yeah. love. And we did went and we went and picked some up but they were the wrong size, so I'm I'm unfortunate that uh, it's I, I can't wear it. But when I do I will be wearing it all the time. I do have my Graham kilt. Uh my best friend long time ago he got married and was wearing kilts for his wedding and the rentals happened to be the graham tartan and i'm like oh shoot i could rent it for 250 or i can buy it for 400 if i buy it at least i'll be able to wear it more than once george, and so william, I got it. william did a biography on jeremy so it was, it was pretty george. cool was it george, it was george yeah. i thought william did it too oh once. he might have yeah yeah anyways the kids have done bi biographies on jeremy they never yeah. choose me yeah and i mean Hello, witch, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. right? But they do not biography, cool the yeah, not as cool as the Scottish thing. Yeah. So they get to bring out all the 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 trinkets and things that go along with Jeremy's history, his lineage, and they they seem to like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just reading Melissa's yeah. uh, list of books. Melissa, if you just scroll through the comments, um, everyone has been shouting out books that they love, whether they're non-fictional or fictional. 
Um, and if you have questions about them, just maybe send them a little message and ask what it's about or uh, the interest of it and they'll answer you, right? Mm -hmm. This is what The Witches Social is for, so you can connect with people and learn um, or share experiences. Yeah, Graham's going on uh, about my grandmother, the Scottish lineage, and I remember oh many a conversation with her. Oh, yes, we are direct descendants of Bonnie <laughs> Prince Charlie, not... We are from the Grams of Claverhouse, not those other barbarians. And she would go on and on, and I just loved it. Actually, I have uh, a large stack of, of Scottish books from her, and uh, very much ancestral pride uh, that I carry is a strong memory of Grandma. And keep it for myself, too. Yes. I, I, yeah. I appeal to the Grams. So when tradition. we were watching Outlanders, yeah. Bonnie Prince Charlie is <laughs> in Outlanders. Yeah. Not a very good character reference of him. Yep. Or maybe he was like that. But anyways, it's, yep. it was kind of interesting because I remember the stories you tell me. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, today is Robbie Burns Day for those who are today. Scottish. Celebrating. Oh, it is. I'm Lady Melinda. She is. She actually owns property I, in Scotland. Yes. This is not a joke. She and owns so does in Jeremy's son, Lewin. Lewin. He is Lord Lewin. Lord Lewin Ransom. Yeah. Yes. We uh, bought a parcel of land for him in Scotland as well because Melinda's Enchanted Cottage is doing that well. We <laughs> have to distribute our funds, funds uh, for tax purposes to purchase property. So I own a little piece of land One square in foot. Scotland. <laughs> there is a tree planted on it and it I can visit it anytime. Yeah, we're welcome to uh, fly <laughs> over and visit. Uh, so that was, uh, that was my birthday present from yeah. Jeremy this year. He made me a lady. Yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, Kim Sabo says she has the McGregor kilt. Uh, her nice. mother's mother's family is Scottish McGregors. Um, more on the lists for books and resources and things like that. Uh, we have a Scott, Sharon's a Mackenzie, maiden name Mackenzie. Yeah, Very nice. nice. So curious, uh, Sharon and Kim, when you uh, dabble in your witchcraft journey, did you ever think of choosing like a Scottish witchcraft lineage kind of mm -hmm. thing? Jeremy was just, just reading some yeah. books, uh, Raymond, one book. Raymond Buckland wrote a book yeah. on Scottish magic, uh, Ke uh, Celtic Picti magic. Uh, it was very cool. I liked it. It was easy to read. Uh, not personally a lot that I would draw from, although I really did like how he utilized a staff in his work. Of course, the Scottish Dirk. Again, anything is just a tool yes. uh, we are the magic we right. empower the tools with the magic but you can apply magic to any types of tools right. any types of traditions yep. um it really comes from us though mm -hmm. from within whether you're hereditary witch or you have lineage um it's cool it's a neat factor but it doesn't uh, distinguish how you are or who you are yeah all right, well, I don't know. What else do you want I'm to loving about? this She's social. Just, fun. I am because it's just like talking about my favorite things with my favorite peeps, right? Yep. So, I mean, I love movies and books and I love anything to do with witchcraft. My library is full of witchcraft books. My movie library is full of witchcraft um, genres. So even horror films, we watch them because we want to see how much truth mm -hmm. they put into them, like Ouija or Insidious. Um, Insidious is like one of my absolute favorites. If yep. you want to know astral projection, watch Insidious. If you can get away from the horn thing up in the ceiling, um, <laughs> they have some good references about astral projection. So yep. yeah, I love this kind of witch's social because it just brings everyone out and everyone is keeping the social going. They're not relying on us to keep the social going. So this is my favorite, my favorite topic so far. Yep. So Awesome. See what happens when we have no agenda. Right. Day, day off. No written agenda here. Oh, Disney's Brave. Somebody's asking if we've seen Disney's uh, Brave. Yeah. Oh, Best oh. cartoon ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kim says she has no idea where she's going to end up with anything, just feeling a lot of stuff out. Cool. Don't Don't think that that's a bad thing. Yeah, no, I was just curious. I, I actually, I, I don't recall us ever discussing your Scottish background before. We've had that topic come up in our MEC workshops. Yep. I just don't remember everyone's lineage. Well, it was, it was well. We were kind of encouraging them to seek out different uh, paths, different uh, exploring different aspects of the craft. Uh, whatever inspires them and in some cases I uh, I could imagine that would be an overwhelming task for people we really encourage them to start simple start small start yeah. somewhere and well, we see cover, where the journey takes you we cover all traditions sure 
right? We're, we're not about just one thing because everyone's different. Everyone's energy is different. You have a personal journey that you need to discover. We're just the tools, the vehicle to help you discover that. So we cover a lot of, a lot of traditions. Scottish, Hungarian, that's a, oh, okay. that's a unique mixture. Yeah, mm -hmm. unique. Yep. Yeah, still. Uh, I would say that there is probably some very diverse magic between the two, too. If you really did look into them culturally, uh, it wouldn't be, I think, the, the Scottish, the English, the Irish, uh, that, that Celtic influence within all of those cultures. It probably had a fairly similar prevailing idea. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Hungarian magic, but I would feel like it would be something wildly different from it's very, the Celtic perspective. It's very hearth and home. Mm -hmm. It's very much about um, what you can find in your home and use that for magic. Mm -hmm. So remember that day we were in the bookstore and I was looking at yeah. voodoo books? This is what I get for stifling stuff. her. Yeah. yeah, I passed up those books to yeah. do the, to, to get the other voodoo books that I wanted. If only um, we had unlimited resources. Yes, if I had unlimited <laughs> resources. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, uh, yes, yes. No, sometimes our dreams have to be met one small step at a time, and this is definitely one of those situations for us. Uh, there's not enough time to read the books we have already, nor do we have all the books we want to read. So it's quite the conundrum. I have like five books on the go right now. Oh, rookie. <laughs> if I have less than ten on okay. the go at a time. Those are smut novels, though. <laughs> mine? No, mine. Oh, I was going to say. They're not even educational books. Let's not go there. I do have one of your Nora Roberts books downstairs <laughs> do. in the bathroom, but he's, then I've piled other books on top of he's it. He's reading so. The Dark Witch by Nora Roberts. That's, it's great, but... It is good. Yeah. Uh, think of Hungarian gypsies, uh, Kim yes. says. Yes. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, very, yeah. I'm not going to get into the uh, perspective of gypsies. That's oh, that's a whole other culture, <laughs> a whole different uh, philosophy, beliefs, uh, uh, stigmas around them as well. Uh, I have memories. We did travel through Europe when I was younger, and I, I remember them. And there was no doubt about the, the power, the potential that they carried as well. Whether it was truly magical or whether it was just because of the, uh, the culture. Uh, I remember we were parking to uh, travel over to Venice, of course, by boat. And uh, uh, everywhere, no parking, no parking, no parking. You will be ticketed, you will be fined. And uh, this little band of gypsies came and parked there. And the police, everybody just kind of looked the other way. And uh, they just did what they wanted. And I remember thinking, wow, that's that's pretty crazy how does that happen how does that work and and uh, i remember hearing quite a few people talking about it and and thinking that's that's very interesting but that's uh, another topic for another day dora is suggesting audiobooks. audio books and i have thought about that because we mm -hmm. do a lot of stuff at the shop where we're just playing music mm -hmm. and i thought why not put some headphones on with a with a book i love the idea of uh, audiobooks. I love the idea of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, the problem is I'm kind of a single task oriented fellow. I can multitask. I can. But it has to come down to I can do something with my hands and I can do something with my mind. Um, maybe a couple of things at the same time. But if I'm listening to books on tape or audio or something like that, I'm losing something else somewhere. So it's, it's a tough one. <laughs> uh, Sharon says she's Scottish, English, and a dash of Ireland descent. Uh, proof, uh, she burns, she doesn't tan. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very cute. <laughs> yep, you were very much in the midst of all of that, uh, that Celtic Druidic lineage. So yeah, check that out. That's pretty cool. Okay. Anything else you can think of? No, oh, I'm good. I had a great day today we had fun. with these guys. Thank you. So again, if you want to add to the comments or chat amongst yourself or throw up some more books, a list of books sure. and things like that, please do so. Just because we're ending the live feed, it doesn't mean you nope. can't carry on. I do try to get to every single comment. I have a couple of things I need to do on the last few posts, okay. uh, last few live feeds yep. um, for you guys. But other than that, I usually answer every single comment, even if it's a hello, I mention, hey, back. So, yeah, until tomorrow, we're back at the shop tomorrow. Yep, back at the shop. Two o'clock. Yep. Not sure what the topic will be yet, so if you have something you want to talk about, just throw it out there or private message us. And, yeah, yeah. that's it. Blessings okay. be, guys. Blessings. Have a great day.